you're listening to Give Yourself Some Leeway with me, your host, Eugene Lee. I've spent the last four years trying to discover how to break the burnout cycle. And as a high achiever in a fast paced world, I know how easy it is to slip back into old habits, leaving you feeling overwhelmed and left behind. If you're anything like me, then you need to hear this. Burning out is not your fault. Yes, you can recover from burnout. And the post burnout growth is not only real, but it feels amazing. This podcast is dedicated to helping break the stigma around mental health in the workplace. Ending burnout culture for good and the action steps that you can take today towards your personal growth and success. So let's do it. Now, I know there's a lot of negativity in the world that we cannot avoid. There's a lot going on between our families in work. There's a lot of pressures and stress and deadlines. But oftentimes when we feel overwhelmed, there's this rallying cry from people around us saying, oh, you just need to stay positive. You'll get through this if you stay positive. As if staying positive is the solution to all your problems. You just need to stay positive through this. Just don't focus on the negative side. Just look at the positive side. Look at the bright side all the time and don't focus on negative. But that's not going to cure everything. This is a sign of toxic positivity where you're just trying to sweep everything else under the rug and only focus on the bright side, not focusing on any of the negative emotions. Just look at what's the positive outcome of this. And while that usually comes with good intentions, it's not always from a good place or never doesn't always have a good outcome. So when thinking about toxic positivity, it's like having that over enthusiastic friend who always says in the middle of a thunderstorm, oh, don't, don't look at the thunderstorm, look at the rainbow or the rainbow that's going to come after the thunderstorm, but not actually looking at the thunderstorm that is happening right now. How do we deal with this thunderstorm so that we can enjoy the rainbows later on? Like they mean, they mean so well that, you know, they, they're like, look, let's not focus on the negatives and just look forward to the positives. But sometimes you have to acknowledge the negatives that are happening right now so that you can better enjoy and better be present in the moment when it comes to the positives later on. It reminds me of when I think of toxic positivity, I think of Professor Umbridge in Harry Potter and she's all this pink and happy go lucky image on the outside when she's the self-defense or the defense against the dark arts teacher and they're saying like oh we're not actually learning any defense against the dark arts spells and she's like oh but you don't need them because there's no danger out in the world and no none of you will ever need to use defense against the dark arts spells because there's no dark arts anymore it's no longer a problem well we all know that Voldemort is back and uh it's it's that thinking positive that toxic positivity way of thinking that if you always think positive the negatives will never affect you rather than processing the negative emotions for what they are and sometimes we're told to just fake it till we make it if you're not happy right now just fake being happy and sometimes putting on that fake smile might get you through the day but Over the long term, if you're going to keep on pushing down all the negative feelings and bottling them up and putting on that fake smile, putting on that facade over time, those negative emotions don't go away. They're going to eat you from the inside if you don't learn how to process and how to regulate them. And that's what can start a downward spiral. You might feel that, oh, I'm ashamed. I can't process these negative emotions. I don't know how. And I don't want to come across as being negative all the time because I don't want to upset my family or my friends or my partner. I don't want to come across as a negative Nancy or or a Debbie Downer on people. I want to be that happy and cheerful person all the time. And I understand that because I've been there too. I've always tried to reframe things to the positive side uh, rather than focusing on the negatives. And that's okay to a certain extent, but when you're all positive and you're just avoiding the negative, that's when it starts to eat at you. That's when all those feelings that you bottle up, but you don't process, they can have 
an impact on how you process your positive emotions also. For me, I pushed down all of those negative emotions and dulled them to a certain extent so that I could focus on trying to be happy all the time. And as a result of pushing down the negative and dulling them, it eventually dulled how I processed positive emotions. And I experienced that at a concert. I was at a Foo Fighters, um, I was at a festival and at the Foo Fighters. And I've mentioned this before, it was just, I mean, I've seen the Foo Fighters when about 10 years ago and it was amazing. I was absolutely buzzing. The spirit, the atmosphere, absolutely torrential rain at Slane Castle in Ireland. And next thing I was seeing them in Germany, it was a beautiful June summer's day and I was there. I was so much closer to the stage than I could have possibly imagined. And I just wasn't feeling it. I was, I felt I was, I was there, but I wasn't processing the emotion. I wasn't fully present. And my friend clicked and he was like, Hey, Eugene, what's, what's going on here? Why you're, you're not yourself. And I was like, I know I'm here, but I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling that I'm not feeling the music. And he knew something was wrong. He's like, that, that's not Eugene. And that was about six months before I completely burnt out that I was having these symptoms that I was my own. I was so numb to my emotions because I didn't know how to regulate them. And that's something that we can avoid, that we can help to reframe how we process our positivity and how we process our negative emotions. So when it comes to toxic positivity in your life, how do you get rid of that toxic positivity that you might be expressing to others that you might be experiencing yourself? If you want to have a healthy balance between negative and positive emotions in your life, you need to acknowledge both. This starts with self-awareness. When it comes to a negative emotion, do I treat it as being wrong, being shameful, as embarrassing, humiliating, that I shouldn't be feeling negative right now because it's only going to bring someone else down? No, that's not right. You need to acknowledge negative emotions are normal. I need to process these so that I can overcome them, accept them for what they are so that I can truly enjoy the positive moments in my life too, that I can acknowledge them for what they are, that they also pass with time and that more negative emotions will come in time. It's a cycle. It's a balance. So you need to have that self-awareness, have that time for reflection. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel these emotions, especially as a man, when the people feel like they can't process those negative emotions or they can't have an outburst. They can't get angry. They can't get frustrated because it's seen as being aggressive and toxic behavior, but it's not. You need to process these emotions and acknowledge them for what they are so that you can move on, that you can grieve and then move on to the positive aspects of your life. Dwelling on negative emotions is different dwelling and not forgiving yourself, feeling ashamed and not overcoming these emotions and moving on to experience other areas of your life. You need to feel these emotions, let them process, grieve, cry, let out a sigh, take a deep breath, just let that emotion, uh, or vent to a friend, just let that emotion process and then allow space to move on. Same comes for positive emotions. Feel them in the moment. Experience them in the moment. And allow them to pass and have that good memory. Because you also have to prepare for, yes, more negative and more positive emotions will come in the future. Next is to practice self-compassion, self-kindness and self-compassion. Treat yourself as you would your best friend. If your best friend comes to you and they're feeling down, what would you do? Tell them to cheer up. Don't cry around me. No, you're going to tell them to process that emotion. Here, come to me and cry on my shoulder, you know, L let it all out. Let me know how you feel, what's really going on. And you're going to dig deep and make sure that they feel better by the end of that conversation. Treat yourself the same way. If you need, if, if you can't express that same gentleness and kindness to yourself. What kind of friend are you to others? 
are you expressing the same kindness and gentleness to others? So start with yourself. You're your own best friend. And how you treat yourself is more than likely how you treat others. Thinking of that as well is when it comes to someone else experiencing negative emotions. Do you put up a wall because you don't want to have that negativity in your life? Or do you build them a bridge? So rather than giving them a curveball, when when they say that they need to speak about something, that they're going through something hard and they're always complaining, rather than saying like, oh, no, no negativity, no negativity around here, only positive thoughts, be listening here. Hear them out. What's going on in their lives right now? And maybe you have a solution for them. Or maybe once they start talking, once it becomes more tangible to them, that they've said it out loud, that it's no longer just that niggling negative self-narrative in their head, that they can come to a solution themselves. Maybe you're the listening ear that they need right now to process that negative emotion so that they can look forward to further positivity in their life. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, could you please leave a five stars and a review on whichever platform you're listening to this? Because it helps it reach more people who may need to hear this. Because I'm not doing this to serve me. I'm here for you. If what I have to say helps impact one person's life, then it's worth it. That's my goal. To impact that one person who needs me the most right now. If you want to dive deeper or maybe have a conversation about this episode or hear more about what we do here at Leeway, you can reach out to me at giveyourselfsomeleeway.com. You can book a call. Let's have a chat. You can send me an email at eugene at leeway.ie or send me a voice note on Instagram at eugene.leeway. Until next time, take care. Thank you.